Hi, Jan Skriak here from Canterborn Research. I'm here at MWC24. I'm on the Qualcomm booth with Angela Baker, Chief Sustainability Officer from Qualcomm. Thanks for having Welcome. me. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Yep. How's the show been so far? So far, the show's been great. Energy has been great at the Qualcomm booth. We're demoing lots of cool things, so can't complain. Cool. And what about from a sustainability perspective? What is Qualcomm talking about this year? So we're talking a lot about on-device AI. We're talking a lot about uh, energy or power efficiency of our devices and power efficiency of uh, networks. Okay, so AI is obviously one of the big buzzwords yes. this year. Everyone's talking about it. There is a question though around the kind of resource hungriness of AI. So yes. the Telefonica CEO on Monday mentioned that one query uses as much as as much water as a bottle water as a bottle of water as a bottle of water. Yes. Um, or uh, enough energy to power a light bulb for two hours. So how does how should the industry, how does Qualcomm envision sustainability being a factor in the AI era? Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge question. Uh, I do think, you know, especially with all of the queries going into the cloud, it's going to use a lot of energy. I think there's a few things. One, we do think, right, eventually all of the data centers will be powered by renewable energy. I think in addition to that, of course, yes, all of the cooling and things like that is going to take a lot of water. Yeah. But we have to also look at what operationally AI will help in terms of building efficiencies and making, you know, grids more resilient and, um, you know, making, you know, manufacturing processes more resilient or more efficient or uh, log logistics for companies, right? So I think there will be some sort of offsetting happening there uh, in terms of how can AI be used or leveraged to build operational efficiencies in. And then from a Qualcomm perspective, we're really looking at, you know, on-device AI, right. which we believe will be more energy efficient because it won't be sending, you know, it won't be pinging the cloud all the time. And so we are looking at, you know, getting some research together around that, around specifically how will that compare in terms of queries going into the crowd, uh, going into the cloud versus queries done on-device. Yeah, right. Okay. And so um, but then beyond AI, how is Qualcomm helping the, the wider industry meet their sustainability targets? Yeah, so I think a lot of the technologies that we develop can really help other industries become more efficient. So in addition to AI, as you just said, you know, we're looking at 5G, right? I think 5G, everything from, you know, precision agriculture, making manufacturing processes more resilient, yep. uh, on the manufacturing floor, um, connected vehicles to everything, right? That's gonna uh, hopefully reduce accidents, but also make uh, driving more efficient and, uh, you know, reduce fuel usage. Yep. Um, so I think there's lots of things that we're leveraging. And as we look into go into 6G, right? How are we building networks? Uh, that are more uh, energy efficient. 5G already, we know, 90% more efficient than 4G networks. Right. Uh, so I think there's lots of things that the company's looking at. Okay. And from a, there's a stark contradiction, I think, in the industry kind of at the moment between sustainability and commercial performance. So obviously, if you're a device vendor, let's say, it's in your interest to sell as many new devices as possible, but at the same time, you increasingly need to be more sustainable. So maybe make those devices last for longer. So if those devices last for longer, there's a longer replacement rate, fewer new devices being bought, fewer Snapdragon chipsets being bought. So how does Qualcomm balance sustainability against commercial performance? Absolutely. Definitely something I think that everybody in, this, in the industry is sort of struggling with or looking yeah. at right now. I think there are a few things. One of the things we're doing is, especially on some of our IoT devices or IoT chips, we are having you know those software updates go longer, right. eight to ten years, right? So it's pushing, and those devices will last even longer. Particularly if you're looking at things like manufacturing and uh, industries where they're not going to change over every two years. Um, but I think uh, you know we are diversifying, right? So yeah, maybe you're not getting a new phone every few years, but our chips are going into you know automotive or chips are going into iot devices all those things so i think from a diversification perspective i think we are yes trying to sell more chips into many more different devices um which will, can also help sort of balance that yeah okay um slightly boring topic sometimes but regulation is something that people always kind of forget to talk about or yeah. try not to talk about try and avoid but we're in Europe, there's a lot of new regulation coming in around the sustainability, whether it's new batteries or replacement or repairability. How is um, Qualcomm kind of adapting to regulations, maybe about ESG reporting, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I think it's driving a lot of what companies are looking at right now, also true at Qualcomm. 
particularly coming out of Europe, you know, the CSRD, that's a really big one. Right, yeah. We're conducting a double materiality assessment. We would have done that anyway, right? We do a materiality assessment every three years to help identify what our material topics are from an ESG perspective. Yeah. And so it's just going to be more tying the financial reporting along with the ESG reporting, which I think is the focus of a lot of this uh, uh, regulation. I think that will help make ESG be more in line with the strategy of the company. So for me, it's a good, right. it's a good thing at the end of the day. It's, it's pretty laborious, but it, uh, it'll get us to where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. I mean, we could talk about this stuff all day, okay. probably, um, but we need to run out, run out of time. So Angela, thank you very much. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. And for those watching, thanks very much. And um, see you next time.